My name is Andrew Stewart, here with Sunset Learning Institute, here to give you a quick introduction to the Cisco Learning Labs, the virtual lab environment that gets used for Cisco's routing and switching courses like CCNA, ICND1, ICND2, um, also for some of the CCMP courses like Route, Switch, and TSU. So I'm going to familiarize yourself with how the system works before you step into it when you come to class. So the first part of accessing the Cisco Learning Labs is accessing the website. Um, you will receive the website address, I'll just tell you now, it's a cll1.cisco.com for the Cisco Learning Labs, and your instructor will provide that to you the day of class. When you talk to the instructor, they will also tell you your username and password. Each of the pods gets assigned to the student, it is one student per pod of equipment, and so it's just you working on your equipment. Now the big idea here is you're going to log in with your username and password. And so I'm just going to go ahead and plug mine in here. I've got a couple of usernames and passwords for all the different courses that I've taught. Let me just roll down to the one I'm going to use today. At that point, once you log in, um, you will not initially see this. Okay, because I've logged in prior to this, it skips over, but there is a end user license agreement. You have to agree to their or sorry, terms and conditions agreement that you have to sign off on. Once you do that, then you'll be presented with the lab's main page. Now, the other thing you might see on that beginning page is something called a token. A token is generated by the instructor, and then they can choose to hand that out to the students. What that lets them do is monitor the students' pods uh, remotely without having to share screens. The instructor can be watching the students work. They can choose to do that. Some instructors choose not to. Um, just go ahead and ask your instructor at the beginning of class, you know, what's the instructor token? Are you going to be using the instructor token this week? Each instructor does it a little differently. You'll, you'll hear from, there, from them how they want to manage that, this, that, that week of the course. So at this point, once you've accessed the learning labs, um, you're going to see a couple big things here. The first thing I want to highlight when we're using the Cisco Learning Labs is you have to install, sorry I got my sound on here, you have to install the Cisco Terminal Installer. What this is, is a lightweight version of PuTTY that installs it through your browser and it lets you open up Telnet connections through your browser. Now if you already have a default terminal installed like Secure CRT or Hyper Terminal, you can use that. That's fine. I'll show you how that works in the next couple, in the, in the next couple bits. But if you want to use just the browser, you need to do the terminal installer. Okay, so make sure you click on that install it. The next part here is for all of the pods of equipment you get for the different courses, you actually have more time than that one week of class. You've got Monday through Friday, you've got different labs throughout the week, but the labs actually have two different timers associated with them. They have a minutes timer and a days timer. And so when you start looking at, like for example, the ICMD1 course, that has a 180 day timer and a 60 hour timer. So what's the difference? The days timer is how many days that pod will be used, it will be available from the moment of activation. So you activate it on Monday of class, you got a, that 180, that 180 day timer starts then. But the 60 hour timer is 60 hours of active use. And so once you've done, once you've been in the pods working on them for 60 hours, that's when the pods disappear. So you won't use 60 hours in that one week, you won't even use 20 hours in that week. Well, you might get, might get close to 20, but you're not going to use 60. The idea is after the week of the class, you still have access to your pond of equipment. You'll go home, go to the office, access it through the browser the same way you did in class, and you can do almost every lab, usually every lab again, for more practice at your own pace. And then just if you run out of time or you hit that 180 day mark, that's when it actually expires. With other courses, we start looking at like the CCMP courses, like the route and switch courses. Those usually have like a 90 day and a 50 hour timer. Not as many days, not as many hours, but you get the idea. It's still available after class ends. So where you want to look there is the time summary. You can see here, I've already used some of my credits on my time that came with this pod, but it tells me how much time I have remaining. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about time management coming up, but again, you can use this after the week of class. So on the left-hand side, you see the list of the labs, 
And there's a breakdown now where instead of just having general labs like we traditionally had where we have lessons and then cumulative labs, now we have what's called discovery and challenge labs. Discovery labs are intended to be done while in the middle of a lesson. The discovery lab is used to show off a topic, to introduce a topic, to give more value to it. Whereas the challenge labs are more like the traditional labs where it's a challenge, it is a summarization of the last couple of lessons or the last couple of modules. So the discovery lab, you're still learning, it's a walkthrough, they hold your hand, they show you the descriptions. The challenge lab, you get given a general goal and you, and you, get, you get told to go, accomplish that goal. So let me show you what both of those look like. Uh, when you're in a discovery lab, let's do, let's say discovery six, configure default gateway here. You'll see the, the, the lab on the left, and then you'll see the status. The status is just the state of the virtual environment. We are working with virtual equipment here. And so this will either say pending, or you see going right here, discovery five, suspended. So that's just saying, have I started that lab, or have I not started that lab, and then, or have I started and frozen it? It's never gonna say finished. It's never gonna say status of completed. This is not a check on the work you've done. This is a status of have you started those virtual routers. That's all. So we can see I've, I've started a couple of these little pods and then frozen them. So if I go into sorry, server eight, configure the default gateway, if I click on that, it'll say start lab, I'm turning up the virtual devices. You'll get this page that says, are you sure you want to turn up those virtual routers? And the reason it says, are you sure, is because this is when your timer starts, that 60 hour, that 50 hour timer. Once I click begin lab, it's turning up the virtual routers in the back end, but now it is also starting to count down my timer. At that point, now I'm in a lab environment, and look in the top right, you can see the timer starting to count down. So that's where you start looking at time management. So the first and probably the most important piece when you're in the labs, never close the browser. Because if you just close the browser, your lab environment's still running and the timer's still counting down. So you'll leave class, you'll come back in the next day, and eight hours off of your overall 50 has disappeared. Problem, right? So you always click the exit button, go back to the main menu, and then you can just close the browser. But you always exit out of the lab first. Okay, so now in these labs, we're, you're going to see a series of devices, and most of the labs have different topologies. Yeah, it's all virtual, it gives us a lot of flexibility there. What's really happening here is we're running something called IOL, or Cisco is running IOL. It's their iOS operating system built for Linux, not for the iOS, sorry, IOL, IOL for Linux. Um, you might also see IOU for a Unix based. Okay. So what's really happening is every single device here, whether it's a router, switch, or a PC, is actually a virtual router. But it's running a slightly different version of the operating system that makes it appear to be a router or a switch. It's just, that's just giving it switch functionality commands or router functionality commands. For your PCs, they're not running Windows VMs, they're not running Macs, it's just a very simple, like an IP-based operating system, the equivalent, where you're going to have an interface, one IP address, and you'll generate test traffic. You'll do telnet and trace route commands. Um, but most of the work is done on the switches and routers, obviously with connectivity courses. So to access the devices, remember you did the terminal installer from the main page, or you've got a default terminal on your computer. To access the devices, you just click on them. So to access this PC, I'll just click on this icon, at that point, I'm using secure CRT. It comes online and says, oh, I got a line protocol message, the interface, change state to down. I'll hit enter a couple times. Nothing happens because this is the first time I've turned up this pod and it hasn't had any traffic. The devices might still be initializing a little bit. Here we go. And we see PC1. We see the pound sign. We see I'm on the command line. Even though I said I'm on the PC, it's still just a virtual router running the, running the operating system. So I'll close out of that. At that point, I'm back to the topology. So that's how you'll access any of the devices. Now there's a couple other tabs up here for the discovery labs. For the discovery labs, challenge is different, but for the discovery labs, the introduction gives you a quick introduction to what's the purpose of the discovery lab. The instructor, the week of class, will also give you a quick walkthrough about what you're gonna do in the discovery lab. It says, here we're gonna be learning about default gateways. At that point, the job aid section is your documentation. 
IP addresses, VLANs, interfaces, usernames and passwords, everything you need to identify or even verify your configuration, um, that would be under the job aid section. The procedure is the walkthrough. Because remember, the Discovery Lab, it's still educating you, it's still holding your hand here. So at that point, you just go jump into the procedure. And at that point, running down through the steps, it shows you what commands to type in, what mode to be in, shows you verification commands. They highlight for you expected outputs so you can see when you're testing, is it actually working as intended? And then you get down to the end of that, and that's the end of the discovery. That's pretty simple. That's what, all that's really necessary here because it's introducing a topic, you're achieving that goal, a little bit of verification. Nothing too complex there. Uh, the last part here is the Manage Devices tab. This, this being a virtual environment, you do have the ability to go in and remotely clear the console, connect to the console, or you can just click on the icon and that works too. You can remotely power cycle a device, and this is great, reload initial configuration. What's happening here is if you hit the reload config button or reload config all, it sets every device in the pod back to the configuration at the beginning of the lab. Sorry, not the pod, every device in this lab. Not every lab, just the one you're in. All right, that'd be a problem if it did every lab. So if I'm in lab eight and I say reload config all, lab eight resets to the beginning. So if you liked the EIGRP routing lab or OSPF routing lab and you wanted to do it again, you just say reload config all, give about 30 seconds, let all the devices come back online. At that point, you can start the lab from step one. That's also great if you get uh, a little confused or something goes wrong in the configuration and you're not sure where the problem is, you just start, from, start fresh, start from the beginning and with the reload config all. Help and settings it just gives you some generic FAQ, gets, gets out the email for the Cisco support, um, just generic help. So at this point, my time's been counting down, so I'll hit exit, go back to the main menu. At that point, it freezes that pod. We now see Discovery 8 has a status of suspended because I was in it, but now I have frozen those virtual devices and now I've gone back to the main menu. Now, officially, uh, what should happen, I'll tell you what sometimes happens as well, what should happen is if you do a copy run star, you save your configuration in that virtual environment and then suspend it, that device should hold on to that configuration. However, Cisco uh, has been updating some of their systems and what we have seen in practice has been that overnight, sometimes the pod resets to its initial configuration. Okay, even, even when not asked. So, what is recommended is if you're going to uh, do a lab, do the entire lab while you're sitting there. Don't plan on doing steps one and two and then coming back the next day and doing steps three and four. It might be back at step one. So, do the whole lab while you're sitting there. And none of these labs are extreme. There's no six hour labs here. So most of that's easy to do in one sitting. So that was the discovery labs where it's very straightforward, again, educational. But then we have the challenge labs, which are a little more challenging. So for example, let's take a look at challenge four, implementing basic named and numbered ACL. I'll go ahead and start up that virtual environment. It says, are you sure you want to start that environment? I'll say, yes, go ahead and turn on those routers. Again, when you turn on, give it a couple seconds because these are virtual devices coming online and then whatever routing protocol they're running, there, that's got initialized. Just give them a couple seconds when it comes online. Aside from that, accessing the device is still the same. Just click on them. But you do have a couple new tabs up here. Uh, obviously, help and settings hasn't changed. Manage devices hasn't changed. Exit hasn't changed. But then, starting from the left, sorry, a little out of order here, the scenario. The scenario is the general goal where they're going to give you the rundown of what you should accomplish in this lab. Obviously, the challenge is not going to give you as much information. They're just giving you a general goal. And so the breakdown, we need some ACLs, we have Bob, we need to have, be limiting from, uh, from three routers, limiting which direction the traffic's going in. All right, so that's our goal. And then that's where they stop. They'll give you a command list. That's a new one. The command list being the commands that are necessary to achieve this lab, but all you, that you've been given is a goal and the command list. And what you have to do as a student is piece together which commands on which routers, on which interfaces would achieve the goal, and then go from there. Now, based off of the discovery labs and what the instructor's been telling you, you should be able to piece that together. 
Um, you again, you still have the job aid section, so you can put in relevant IP addresses to your ACLs or routing protocols, for example. But if you can't figure out what's going on or where to start, you do have hints available. You can click on the hints page, and I'm not gonna click on these, don't worry, no, spo no spoilers in this video. Um, it'll even still hide the hints from you uh, for, the, for the different levels. And so if you're stuck on a step, you're, not, you're trying to figure out, you know, what should I do, where should I start, you can look at the hints and it'll kind of prompt you toward different ACL types, prompt you toward, you know, directions, things that might spark your, uh, spark an idea of where to apply a filter in this lab, for example, with PCLs, or for the routing protocol, how, which autonomous system number you use. It varies per lab. So that's kind of the hints. It kind of pushes, but doesn't just give you the answer. And then you have your validation. I'm just gonna move through this real quickly. Again, try not to give any spoilers. The validation is based off of what you configured, here's the verification that you could run, here's the ping commands, the show commands, what should it look like if you configure it correctly? And again, they highlighted for you what, it, what you should expect to see if you did it correctly. Obviously, some things might be a little different, like named ACLs might not be exactly the correct name, but still functional. Um, that's fine. Um, but we should see like general connectivity, like yes, you can ping to the destination, or no, you can't. That should be the same. And then last but not least, if you can't figure it out, if you're really stuck in the labs, they do have an answer key. All right, and the answer key is just that. It's the commands that are necessary to advance the lab, move through all the steps, and achieve the goal. And so the recommendation here is, again, because you can reload the config on the devices, if you are stuck on the lab, you can't figure out, use the answer key. Have it walk you through the labs, kind of like a discovery lab. But then later, go reload the configuration on everything and try to do the lab again without using the answer key, all right? That way you are getting practice with those commands, but you're also hopefully learning and cementing what those commands do and why you're using them. Again, hit exit to close out of that lab. Don't just close the browser. At that point, that brings you back to the lab environment and you're good to go, so to the main lab environment. So, don't forget your terminal installer. Don't forget your overall time. You've got your days from the day of activation versus the hours of active use. You've got your discovery labs versus your challenge labs for educational versus uh, challenging. Did you learn what they were talking about in the last couple of lessons? And that's pretty much it. Um, some of the functionality that you're gonna see in the labs with uh, IOL is a little different. It presents a little differently when you start looking at uh, interface status like line protocol. Um, it'll actually not always recognize that an interface is down and might show an up up operational status. Um, aside from that little quirk, you will be able to use in the labs the same commands that you use in the real world. Show interface status, show IP route, kicking off routing protocols, named ACLs, pri private ACLs, all the kind of functionality you would want to test, you can do that in these labs. All right, so you get a lot of parity there. Hopefully this has been helpful, and looking forward to see you guys in class. Have a nice day.